I typically start stuff with people's origin stories. So tell me about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Uh, Spanaway. Spanaway. Uh, I was born on. Uh, I was born in Old Madigan Hospital and uh, ended up uh, going to school uh, in Spanaway. I went to a Christian grade school and then I went to Bethel. And then I ended up in a relationship with somebody who was uh, female and pregnant. So I was going to school, helping taking care of an infant, and uh, we moved out of my mom's into our own place. I was like 17 years old, so I was working too. And that became a lot. Um, but I was always, uh, her and I always had, a, at the time, while we were together, we were together seven years, we always had a place and stability for the kid. Um, I didn't try anything hardcore when it came to drugs or allowed drugs around or inside the home at all while I was a parent. Um, it was too much of a risk. I kept seeing my friends going through the system with CPS and all that shit. I wouldn't risk it. So when, when they would ask to come over or come over to stay, um, I would say, if you're going to do that shit, do it in your car. Don't even... You know, go park out there and do it. Don't even bring it in the house. My kid's going through too much shit. And if I come home from work and I find my kid dead, I'm going to, you know what I mean? It was just too much. I ended up having to kick a friend out that I'd had since grade school because she broke my rule. It's funny how as you grow older and as time happens, you see the dramatic change in all of it. Like, I've lived, like, a few different extremes you know this is just another extreme that I'm trying out um, that I probably should have done years ago I'm 35 okay. so like I went from high school to you know in theory being you know a you know a 30 year old you know in theory a 30 year old with you know paying bills you know raising a kid and then at times having my friends kids stay with me because they were unstable so, you know, raising multiple kids with my ex to now being out here amongst a bunch of people that are, you know, just getting out of high school or going through college. And, you know, I know more about being a fucking house. Excuse my language. Sorry. I know more you about are free to be you. Absolutely. yourself. I, I know more about being, you know, cooking and being a house parent and a housewife or house husband than I do about half the stuff out here. And I'm learning, which is a good thing. So, you know, it, it's not, you know, there's, you know, knowledge with wisdom and it's good to know these things and to notice these things. You know, the prowler that's been stalking the single mom for a month that maybe nobody really noticed, but you did. That, you know, one night while you were walking around, you saw crawling up the side of their house, which is terrifying. Uh, that's a true story. Yeah, tell me about that. I was just going to ask. You, you sounds like you saw something. Yeah, in Spanaway, I noticed this son of... There was two of them. One that called himself the Angel of Death, and then the other one that I didn't get to talk to. The angel of death was somebody that walked around 255th that um, took me into the backyard of what looked like a nice family house with kids and shit to smoke. And it scared me so bad. I ended up running away from him because I knew people, you know, I lived back there at one point and I knew people back there. And uh, there's a, they already have a monster back there that is a violent guy. So, like, hopefully he took care of that guy because, you know, once a guy like that calls the area his, he typically doesn't bother the people there and he becomes the guard dog. Mm -hmm. That's what they try to work with guys like that for. And uh, this guy was walking around back there trying to be some angel of death type thing to, you know, I don't know if it was to impress some of the girls or if it was to scare them into submission, but... Um, that's got to be one of the coldest, scariest things that I've ever encountered was, you know, this guy out of nowhere wanting to smoke in the backyard of a, a family that's asleep with kids and shit like that. That wasn't, that wasn't his 
home. No, because at first I thought it might be his house that he was just being, you know, do, you know, trying to get laid or something and doing some spooky play on. Because one of the girls that lives back there that I went to high school with, she likes to date the spooky ones. What? what? Like when you say back there, are you talking about Spano way? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so uh, there's a girl that I know that likes to date the spooky guys, that likes to, that, you know, I could see, you know, him knowing who I was because of her and just trying to either spook me or trying to get laid or something. But um, it wasn't the guy's house. It wasn't his house. And uh, because I said, okay, you know, as we started to smoke, it was getting cold. I said, let's go inside. And when he said, this isn't my house. There's toys back here. There's, and I just looked at him and I thought, how many times have you come back into this, these people's backyard? There's kids here. And, you know, I, I took off and I took off running. I said, nope. I said, I, you're one of those people, I swear to God, you're probably one of those people that's gone into that house 20 dozen times and stood over watching them sleep or some shit, you know what I mean? Like well, that, I'm glad you listened to your gut and got out of there. Well, we've all made mistakes in our lives and shit like that. I ended up having to run through somebody's backyard once and I went to go run through their house, but that was because I was being chased. And I felt bad for doing that. I have felt bad ever since for doing that, but that's because I was being chased by probably the same guys that were doing that. But um, after that happened, I started really paying attention and uh like i said there was one night i saw this tall skinny guy and it looked he the way he slithered up this person's side of this person's house this wall climbing up probably had one of those things where you could just stick them up on the wall and you just climb like that on your you know you have the flat spot on your boots and then these things he climbed up this person's house with ease in the middle of the night and uh Right after that, uh, I went over by uh, Walmart and there was a drop spot, a bunch of backpacks and a bunch of duffel bags, people's stuff. There, I could hear people there, but I couldn't see them. What does that mean, a drop spot? Like uh, somebody dropped off a bunch of stuff and just left it there. Gotcha. Watch that little mic. I'm oh, sorry. Somebody dropped off a bunch of stuff and just left it there. I see. And I could, I could hear people talking all around me. And there was somebody else with me that could hear it too. So I looked at the person with me and I said, well, let's pick up all this stuff because it's nice stuff. Not just going to leave it here, you know. Let's take it over to so-and-so's house. And uh, if there's people here that we can't see for some reason, they'll either follow us or they won't. And that's what we did. And uh, sure enough, over time, you know, people came in and a couple people came in and got their backpacks. But like some of the weirdest stuff happened out in Spanaway. And the base is right there, so it doesn't surprise me. Well, let's go, let's go back a little bit. Um, you mentioned both your folks were in the military? Uh, or what did you say? So my, my dad was a supply sergeant. I don't really know much about my mom. My mom, I, I thought was just, you know, the supply sergeant's wife, but I'm thinking that that's not the case. So I'm not gonna You're right. speculate and stuff like that. I just heard from a couple people that she did a little bit of servicing too. Well, t uh, tell me about like growing up as a kid. Um, he got out at a young age for me. So uh, for me and my brother. Uh, so it's just you and your brother growing up? Uh, well, no, they split eventually. Um, I have another brother and an, uh, I have, <laughs> okay, so I have an older brother, an older sister and a younger sister with my dad. And then I have a little brother with my mom. Gotcha. So I have a lot of siblings. I'm sure there's probably more siblings out there. <laughs> But you're like, you know, for, I guess I'm wanted to ask, you know, about your childhood. Like, what was it like growing up for you, Steph? They did the, they did the best they could. I mean, I never wanted for anything or needed for anything. Uh, good health care. Uh, uh, I, uh, you know, they raised me right. I feel like they did. Um. I probably could have been better and be more behaved, but I mean, I didn't get in trouble with the cops all the time. I never got in trouble with the cops, actually. So, you know, I didn't get in trouble for the first time until I was in my 30s. So, you know, I, which is probably a good thing. You know, I went to the mall and I brought money with me. 
I gave money to my friends that looked like or tried to shoplift at the time. Funny, all these dramatic flip-flops as you go through life. But yeah, because my grandma said, you never send, never send a kid to the store without giving them pocket change they're going to steal. So she always gave my brother and I five or 10 bucks or 20 bucks. I feel like it's, we all kind of, well, I don't know about we all, I can say I experimented with <laughs> I'm stealing at one like point I said I'm in my 30s kid. and I'm having to learn how to do that shit to survive. Oh, so that's like, a different story though. But see, but but that just kind of goes to show you a big flip flop. Like uh -huh. when I had a kid and I was more into making sure that the kid had everything he wanted and needed. I didn't care if it was food stamps. You know, we had food in the house. He had food in the house. He ate, and I ate too because he ate. You know what I mean? But. uh you know, and we were, I wasn't going to steal in front of him. So I made sure that, you know what I mean? I just, I just didn't do that shit. I made sure that we did it as legit as we could. And when we couldn't, I called mom or my dad or somebody, you know what I mean? Which wasn't, I tried not to do that often. So that way they didn't, you know, I made sure I had a job, you know, it's just all those things. And it's, you know, funny when all that shit falls apart and it ends up being just you. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So this relationship ended. Yeah. But how, how long ago? Oh, it's been years now. Years. It was just the most stable part of... It was one of the anchors, one of the anchor stable points in my life. I see. Where I... A chunk of time. Yeah, a big chunk of time where I was, you know, never... I, I mean, I think that there was only one night that we slept in the car and that was in between moving. And he was a baby for that. Yeah. And then throughout us, you know, not being a couple, um, I had a year where I was living in an apartment with my older sister that I had him living with us because she had a, she had a kid that had some medical issues. So she needed to take time to focus on, you know, so I took him for the year and he went over there every other weekend. So I mean, like, yeah, that was the most stable part of my life was being a parent. No, I think that's great. I think it shows, you know, dedication and love. And, like, you know, I have two little girls, and I know what it's like when you say you do anything for your kid. You make sure they eat the best. You want the best for them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's great. You know, it shows, again, that you care and love and can do it. Um, yeah. So let's talk about, I guess, I don't know, your current situation. Like, or, or, or not even that, like, uh, so... I guess the you're unhoused now. Yeah. How long has that been? Uh, it's been on and off for the past four or five years. And how did that like start? Like, how does that happen? Because people don't understand. Like, this could never happen to me, kind of thing. How does that happen? How did that happen to Stephanie? I was living with a friend, and uh, we had a lease there and everything. He was going through some shit with his wife. And I tried to push for him and his wife to get through it because they had a little girl. And, uh, of course, I saw myself, you know, push through it. Well, um, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to sleep with everything that walked. So, you know, I had a friend over and he tried hooking up with her. He ultimately ended up hooking up with my sister. And uh, he tried with me and it didn't work and so I got kicked out because I'm you know I, I prefer women for all intents and purposes but um, you know I was friends with him and his wife so but uh, I got kicked out and then which uh, he eventually paid a couple people on the streets to steal my car that I had bought from him he paid $400 is what they told me well so when you got kicked out you went to your car yeah gotcha and uh, Somebody started fucking with it when I was asleep because I had my friends on the street check it and somebody would jiggle the alternator or he had something because the car was his, it was his ex-wife's at one point. So there was something in there that he installed that he could push that would f screw with the alternator. Like a kill switch kind of thing? Yeah. And uh, like I said, eventually, it, you know, it got stolen twice and I recovered it twice and then the third time it was just gone and then of course they recovered it and then sold it to one of my friends so so but when it gets stolen and it's gone you're not in your car anymore you on on the streets yeah gotcha yep yeah 
yeah, it's funny how he recovered the car and sold it to my friend Brittany. So when I saw her driving around in it, I just kind of looked at her. I was thinking, wow, you're kind of a bitch for this. This was my home. You know, if I had a car, because I was driving around making money using this thing for gas and to live. And, you you know, that's just as bad as him paying $400 for people to steal it. And then you now, you know, you've bought it from him. You know, you should have given it back to me. Like, that's my car, asshole. You know, and... Uh, I'm not sure I'm ever going to really forgive that because of all that I've gone through on the streets. I wouldn't have gone through as much had I been in a vehicle because, you know, at least in a vehicle, you know, I could hide somewhere, park somewhere or go somewhere, you know, yeah. go to a family member's house or something and not be stuck. Yeah, there's a lot to that. Transportation, uh, some sort of shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Protection. Yeah. It's more than a tent, you know? Yeah, people would just crawl in. I mean, there was one night I was with a guy friend, and we were in a dead sleep, and I woke up, and there was a guy on top of me. And I knew the guy, too. He's a crazy dude. He starts screaming at me like I did something wrong. It's like, no, get the fuck off of me, you fucker. You know? It, it, that, that's just how quickly it happens, but that's how, literally how quickly it happens. Like, you know, you end up becoming best friends with somebody, and then all of a sudden they go psychotic, and they start... You know, one of my guy friends, you know, out of nowhere, you know, came at me with a metal pipe. I don't know what happened before I got back home, but somebody had tweaked him. And uh, he had gone into some psychosis. And then I said, look, I need to get some sleep. Can you go over to your tent or somewhere to do that? And he came walking back in just, like, frozen-faced. And he had a metal pipe with him, and he attacked me with it Yikes. broke my foot with it oh yeah stuck so my foot up to block him from hitting me in the head and uh i had to fight him like literally fight him off and uh i had built a like a shack thing so i had two by fours so i grabbed one of the two by fours and let the thing fall and i hit him as hard as i could in the head i can't, I can't believe i didn't break it i broke his collarbone is what i did i hit him stunned him enough to be able to run around him and we were by the freeway, so I jumped down and ran on the freeway to get away from him. Because he said he was going to kill me. Um, well, I'm curious. Um, I'm still friends with the guy, too. <laughs> Somebody had tweaked him and made him fucking... So what, do you, what does that mean for the people that don't know what, when someone tweaked him? Somebody, either somebody hit him in the head. Okay, there's a lot of people out here that have good intentions that are going to school to be counselors and therapists. A lot of people that work for the cops or work for the military or work for, you know, mental health facilities that come out here and they case these people, they want to make their lives better, and they start doing a mental therapy on them. Because God knows that since the days of caveman, somebody living outside is not normal with all the resources we have. Well, there are some people like, <coughs> and I don't necessarily like it all the way either but I do also understand with a lot of things that have been going on the value of having somebody on every street corner to make sure that nobody's coming up off the water or dropping down from the sky that we don't know about you know what I mean so I, I do understand the value of that and I'm all about that but uh, not everybody's for that made for that and you know it, it, it takes a certain kind of strength but uh God, what was I going to say? Oh, we're talking about tweaked. So they get a head injury, and uh, there's a small group of people that stay right next to or close by that they may or may not be able to see that tell them that basically mind fuck them into, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, we're outside in Ballard doing this right now, right? Okay. So in theory, the wind's blowing. Okay, there's a fan that's right there. We're actually in a building and these are all green screens. And that's tweaking somebody. Yeah, so like you take somebody like me into a building and you sit me down and it's a set up like this in whatever, however you use the green screens for me to think I'm outside in Ballard 
when really I'm, you know, in Spanaway or Tacoma in a warehouse or some bullshit like that. Like, tweaking. This is in theory. Con- confuse somebody. Yes, they can confuse yeah, somebody. So you could do that. You could do that with medications. Uh, one of my guy friends that I spent the night with the other day, somebody's out here right now, giving uh, what are they called? Shit, block uh, nerve blockers to people. N- nerve blockers? Yeah. You watch your that microphone. On your and on your neck. Like I could see it on his neck, and I I looked at it, and I I didn't pick at it. I just could see somebody was there's no way that they were doing that to him while he was awake unless he didn't oh wow yeah they're doing that to people out here they're giving them nerve blockers um if you look at my shoulders i've been hit a few times by something uh you know they're giving people some sort of medication it might be medication that they need that we need you know there might be stuff going around that we don't know about i mean I mean, there were, there were a group of assholes that were a self-proclaimed terror group that were uh, a sleeper cell group that was trying to rise up in Seattle, too. You know what I mean? So, you know, you get these assholes that start rah rah ringing and you start seeing them come out with their tattoos and shit. And, you know, they get a hold of us and the next thing you know it, you know, they use those, you know, numbers or whatever to get into your mind and start yeah. preaching whatever bullshit you know and hate that they want you to rep yeah. <laughs> so I mean stuff like that well, I, I couldn't believe all that was real until I saw it for myself for a stand out here so I mean like it's stuff that you'd see in the movies it's it's stuff that you'd see in like like American History X or you know movies like that you know uh, just the, the reality of that being an everyday thing that we're all having to fight up against. Well, tell me, how long have you been in Ballard? I just got here today. Oh, from I, I, where? Seattle. From like downtown Seattle? Yeah. Gotcha. You t- took the bus up here? Yeah, I just took the bus up here. Gotcha, gotcha. I just needed a break. Oh, well, tell me, fr- from what in downtown Seattle? Yeah. Well, like, what do you what do you mean, break from what? It's quiet, and you can. I mean, yeah, you can hear all this and go down to the water there, but it's just. It's different than downtown. In what ways? Calmer, quieter. Uh, I mean, lately, downtown's been... I mean, you can hear everybody talking about it. You know, it. people are... It's coming out of their mouths every three words. You know, it, it feels like a war zone down there. It feels like we're getting ready to go to war. Every, everybody's mumbling about it and speaking easy about it. Like, you know, we're all just kind of... Because all this weird stuff keeps happening. People driving with these cars that sound like bombs exploding. You know, we can hear it. We can smell it walking down the alleys and people's legs. That's not a MRSA infection and a staph infection from shooting up. That's a burn all over that guy's legs. And he... You know, people are trying to make him feel like it's because he's living outside and it's because of this, that, and the other. No, that's not the crocodile flesh eating bacteria. That That's sulfur burn. Somebody's doing that. Somebody's dropping those chemicals and somebody's releasing that shit that's burning our boys and our girls. And, you know, that's why... I mean, I've even got some of it going on and it's not as bad as theirs because I'm trying to stay, you know, out of the alleys as much as I can and on the main roads. But like, and when I am, you know, depending on, you know, crashing in the inner parts of the cities, I'm going into a cove that's by an actual building where there's doors because it's too dangerous in those back alleys right now, whatever they're releasing. So you felt unsafe and so you came up to Ballard. Well, no, I just sat with someone and hung out with them, and he just said, let's get on the bus and just go, and that's what I did. I'll probably go back down there, because that's where everyone I know is. I just... Yeah, your community's there. Your community's there, like, people you know. Yeah. It's downtown. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. It was just a ride, and then, you know, we got separated, and it was just nice to rest and not have, you know, people... It's rougher down there, so people that don't like you, that want to gang stalk you, follow you around town and picket you and bug you, and that's another 
way that you know some of us get you know tweaked is you'll have somebody that doesn't like you that will literally you. yeah they'll do laps around you with their friends and they'll holler at you they'll you know that can be the equivalent of uh you know you start seeing people with sores and zits and uh, some of these people you know there will be girls the girls it happens a lot with college girls and high school girls that haven't tried drugs a day in their life that got all these hot spots and molting spots on their body and that's because of groups of people that harass them that are yelling hate speech at them that are driving circles around them i mean you know uh the israelis walked around jericho for what 40 days and 40 nights and then shouted at it and dropped a bunch of pots and blew a bunch of horns and it destroyed the integrity of the wall that was built and they went in and took over the city so if you have somebody doing a jericho on you it's gonna you know that's just doing circles around you and then on that 40th day with all their friends ah, you know yeah. it's a similar concept if they could do it to a wall if i imagine that that would drive me nuts yeah <laughs> i'd want to be like get out of here like go away <laughs> How do you think I feel? I went to a Christian school and I understand that. So like going out to Yelm and seeing, you know, somebody with, you know, somebody with, uh, you know, per se hot air balloons and small aircrafts dry, flying circles around the volcano, that can be kind of disturbing too. Uh, Stephanie, is there something that you'd want to say to the people of Seattle? Peace. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Tell me more about that. What do you mean? We should be nicer to each other. I think if we were nicer to each other, things would be move a lot easier and be a lot smoother. You know, be kind. You know, not so quick to violence and shit like that. You know, maybe. Yeah, we need another hippie movement. I think that that might help. <laughs> the hippie movement. The peace, yeah. Hippie movement. I mean, yeah, when they were all getting laid and taking acid, they all seemed to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to rock music, Jimi Hendrix playing the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, more of that. More Woodstock 69. <laughs> Shit, you can get behind the year of 69, but you can't get behind the concert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. That's good. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to say? No. <laughs> Stephanie, thanks for your time. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. It's good to hear your voice. And, uh, yeah, take care of yourself. Thanks. I need, actually, you know, um, we need to teach guys to be a little bit more like the guy that I was with this morning and well, maybe like you. Tell me more. Hold on. Let me put this on Tell you. me more. Because, like I said, I have a stepson. So, well, you know, uh, we need to teach guys. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure that, like, the golden age of Hollywood, like, my grandma and my mom's age, that they had uh, issues with. God, I say that and I start seeing you flash in a tuxedo and then you flash in all these different suits and dressing wares from all the different generations. <laughs> Because I just can't wrap my head, my head around how I've watched all these movies and read all these stories, you know. I grew up around, you know, an older generation and uh, just how violent, I don't, I don't know, just so uh, I'm going to take what's mine type thing just you're sweet and you know one of the you know one of the things that I, I've talked to with a lot of the guys you know is uh, when they go on a date like dating instead of uh, just because you go on a date doesn't mean you're gonna sleep with them or fool around with them like I don't know if it's the escort service or if it's all of these things but they seem to think that you know, even just taking somebody homeless home and saying, hey, you look like you need a shower and all this. Because guys will do it for guys, too. I've seen them do it. And girls will do it for girls, too. I've seen them do it. But then, you know, you get the guys that go out there that say, hey, you know, I'm not a weirdo. You know, we're going to do that. And then you get there and, you know, the most vulnerable time, times in your life, uh, 
being on the toilet, <laughs> being in the shower, and uh, sleeping. So when you're, you know, in the shower and you're totally naked, and the next thing you know, they jump in the shower with you. <laughs> There's a, a, a lot of a lot of big grown men that do that out there that get grants to help these girls that get paid to bring these girls in to give them showers to give them clothes to give them backpacks and food and all that that literally do it and quick pro quo these poor girls does that make sense it's more predatory yeah less of that and maybe more of you know if they're gonna have these guys be funded then make sure they're getting the counseling that they need and make sure they're getting their sexual needs met like have them go to a, some sort have a therapist monitor them or an uh, 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 off-duty cop you know what I'm saying have somebody monitor them because those hormones are what cause that it's not necessarily you know the uh, all the guys fault because we're we're producing and spraying pheromones that we don't even realize half the time especially if you know for the females we're ovulating you know and for the guys they're receiving that mentally so even if you're not interested in somebody because i prefer women but that doesn't mean that my body isn't going to be chemically responsive to somebody that you know my ovaries can say hey this can get you this does that make sense so the these poor guys that are really genuinely trying to make a difference that may not be educated in that you know that can make um you know because of testosterone and stuff that could make the situation aggressive and make the guy aggressive well i hear what you're saying can i speak to a little bit of that yeah to me as you say if there's a guy that is approaching females and saying, hey, I'm a good guy, Can you, you need a shower, you need to clean up, that's immediate red flag because no guy should ever be doing that, especially alone, ever. Even if they have good intentions, whatever, it's like that is just not safe. A stranger saying, come to my place, if, if that's the case. You well, know. there's a few of them that I've met that are older hippies that are really nice that wouldn't harm the hair on a girl's head. That Maybe so. Been... I would say be incredibly cautious. Yeah. And don't go alone. Maybe you can bring somebody with you. That's, well, when it it's sounds a, very risky. Yeah, but when it's 30 degrees outside mm. or it's going to drop into the 20s and, you know, some of us out there that have been out there long enough, you build a rapport with some of the people that are in houses that have lived I out see. there on the street right. so there so there is a difference right there is a difference between the ones that do it regularly after they get to know some of these yeah, people yeah. you build a relationship trust etc but no you're right about the first part though because there are guys that do get into places that just jump into it and think well i see all these you know i'm gonna go out and yum 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 yum, yum. You're so, so you're right yeah and, well, and it's like how tempting is that when it's 20 degrees out and someone's saying hey you want to take a hot shower at my place like that's you're, I mean you're so vulnerable well yeah because you know for a while there I was looking like G.I. Jane with a bunch of the you know weapons that I had you know I had knives and pepper spray and all that and eventually I just I started to get rid of it because not just because of how it made me look but because it becomes more of a problem than anything else mm. you know what I mean and then uh yeah, because it's just... Well, I mean, so let's speak on... You mind if I ask you more about, like, being a female and being unhoused? Like, it seems like, I can only imagine, it would be a lot more scarier than being a guy than being unhoused. I, you know, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because... Uh, I don't want to say that because I've held a few guys... I've held a few guys that have been in tears with some of the stuff that happens out here at night that have been just, you know, they said, I want my mom and hmm. just, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that at all just because, you know, especially when their friends die in front of them. Because I've had to do CPR on some of them. And that's another reason why I, because I know CPR, I know you know a lot of that stuff so you know most of the time when i'm up to when i'm up to speed and i'm not 
you know, I have a cold and all this stuff. You know, I have Narcan on me and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, little Miss, you know, Susie Nurse, you know, walking around, you know, the alleys and walking around, jumping in when they're overdosing because, believe it or not, like, you know, every street corner, I swear to God, for a while there, there was somebody overdosing every hour. There was one, there was a couple of guys, and this one broke my heart, because uh, I'm a little bit on the clairvoyant side, so uh, I saw him leave. Like, I saw this man leave his body. Uh, me and my guy friend were talking to these two guys that looked like they'd been friends since high school, were out there doing their thing, you know, and uh, he was a big guy, and he just took one hit, and uh, he went down. This guy friend jumped on top of him. He started doing CPR and screaming, call 911, give me the Narcan. And I just stood there and I looked at my friend. And there was a there was a black woman that was sitting in her, uh, sitting in a wheelchair watching the situation too. And he's just, he's just sobbing like this, you know, 250 pound guy sobbing at his, his bro. <laughs> and, uh, he didn't, he didn't wake up. He didn't wake up. You know, they'd been doing this shit for years. They'd been smoking this shit and doing this shit for years. And some asshole had motherfucking poisoned it or something. And, yeah. And the thing is, is I saw that last, you know, he went, when he did that. And I saw something get up out of him and take off running. And it was funny because the black woman that was in the uh, wheelchair looked right at me and said, I'm going to go for the said something, I'm going to go for the spirit, and she went after the spirit, yeah, a lot of us would, because, you know, you get close to, uh, toeing that line between being alive and being dead, we can, some of us can see that, and I, like I said, I saw some, somebody get up out of him and take off, I and so did the black lady, because she went, looked right at me and said, I'm going to go get it, I'm going to go get him. And the drug is fentanyl, typically? Yeah. It's either fentanyl or it's uh, it's not heroin anymore. Right. It it's either like fent fentanyl. It, it's either fentanyl or it's um, it's something that they're putting in the fentanyl because you get fentanyl in the hospital too for surgeries. Hmm. You know, you get patches and stuff. Cancer patients, whatever they're putting in it that's turning it green is what's making it deadly. Because usually it's blue. No, it's, no, no, no. it's uh, supposed to be, <laughs> it's a white, you know, it's white powder or a white, um, you know, rock, and as you burn it, it should turn uh, like a tan color, like a buttery tan color, or sometimes a red color, not too red though. Well, well then, what, when people say blues. Blues are the pills, the Percocet 30s, the Oxys, those oh, are. gotcha. Sorry. Yeah, those are different. They have. They say that there's fentanyl in those, but I'm not so sure about that. Well, that just goes to show. Like that's that says something there. That like I'm saying this, and you're like I'm not sure because it's like you don't really know. Well, okay. So or the, the, the car fentanyl would be the mess and the fentanyl mix. That I could see turning blue, but yeah. the other day, this girl, or this guy, and this girl that I was with, this couple. They um, were smoking something that turned green, and it was supposed to be fentanyl, and it made them sicker than shit. It was like poison, and it made them sicker than shit. I took one hit off of it, and it made me feel uncomfortable, too. It gave me, like, the um, restless arm and leg syndrome, and I didn't like that. It freaked me out. That was it for me. No, whatever. Somebody's trying to kill you guys, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you be careful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, please be careful. Yeah. All right. I'm going to grab that little mic again. Thanks for sharing that.